Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about the month of June 2022. I will be telling you about the comprehensive astrology picture that is coming up for this month ahead. I will be uh, delivering some intuitive messages that I've downloaded about the month and then I will follow that up with a very specific uh, astrology section where I will talk about some of the meaningful transits and dates in the month ahead of June. So I hope you're all doing really well. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up the video. And if you want to get bonus weekly forecasts, I provide those on Patreon, which will be linked below as the top link and in the top right hand corner. So um, I hope you're all doing really well. I've been spending a bit of time after these very impactful eclipses that we had in the month of May, uh, trying to see the new direction that we are headed and identify the new momentum as we are really stepping onto a new, much lighter, much more enjoyable, much more easygoing uh, wavelength. So I want to congratulate you all stepping into this time. As you're listening to this video, take a second to look around and see how well you've done for yourself. Like take a second to look around and see how right now you might just be in the place that you have always needed. Right now you might just be in a job or in a house or in a location or in an environment that is perfectly aligned to give you the results that you might have been needing for years and years now. This is a gift of time. This is, uh, for many, many people, uh, generating for them the stimulus, the results, the people, the relationships, the environments with which they can step into their greater more ultimate, more, you know, that, that sounds kind of heavy in a way, but it's like people now are being offered from the universe a direct line to a better life and to build a better situation, a lighter, more simple, more receptive situation. It is going to be a very beautiful month. These eclipses that we had in May, if you want to get some uh, hindsight on those, I've made videos about them, be sure to check them out. They really wiped the slate for a lot of people and they took out a lot of the negative energy lines. Um, I was meditating during the lunar eclipse in Scorpio on May 15th, and I basically saw that collectively there were so many toxic energy lines cut, and there were so many um, unnecessary investments of time, money, energy basically being reset. So many of us are now going to be working with a lot more energetic reserves. And we're going to, because of that, have a lot more to spend or a lot more to give back or a lot more to save as well. And I feel that that's a lot of what the month of June 2022 is going to be about. Uh, re reconnaissance comes up. The word reconnaissance is coming up. The word uh, reset, the word um, re-experience or re-assert uh, yourself within your environment. Uh, those ideas and words are coming up. It's very much a reboot, a restart, a re-examination, and a recon. Okay, so we are going to be entering a much more Martian energy line, a much more masculine Yang energy coming in as we have Gemini season. We have a Jupiter-Mars conjunction in Aries. We have a full moon in Sagittarius, okay? We have some beautiful, beautiful energies and also some very beautiful feminine energies happening as well, um, but it won't be until Cancer season that those really start to express themselves more powerfully. But um, yes, again, intuitively for the month of June, I am just really taken aback by the wonderful healing opportunity that presents itself. So if you need more time away from work, feel free to take that now. If you need that vacation, take that now. Um, whatever it means for you, because this is different for everybody, to be in a more meaningful environment, to be in a space where healing can occur, to be in a space where you don't have to have these like adrenaline filled decision processes where you're not like waking up in the morning, um, freaking out about your alarm, where you're not having to make constant like life changing decisions. Um, it's good to pl place a pause button on any of the life altering, uh, crazy, undoable, undefinable situations, because it feels that we all just need a period of time here to just step into first person and enjoy some of the smaller things of life as June and to a degree July of 2022, only these two months, okay, of 2022, are really coming in to set us 
on a new journey or to set us on a new uh, adventure in a sense. And that adventure is not like the uh, cinematic or, uh, you know, high octane adventure. For some people it will be that, but for the majority of people who've been going through high octane very consistently or as an everyday part of their life, this is a time back. It's basically introducing the opposite. You know, if you've been kind of bored, you might get a more adventurous experience here. And if, you, if you've been overwhelmed, you might get a more uh, even kilter experience. Now, and that's only going to be June and July. Again, all the other months of 2022 are demanding us to push hard, demanding us to take it to the next level, demanding us to tackle unfinished business, and demanding us to uh, foster a much higher degree of uh, strength. Okay, And it's good to still be doing that in a calm way, but the most important thing to understand about June is that um, there has to be some type of getting back to evenness, to getting back to a space where you have enough sobriety, health, and wisdom, and clarity to make the important decisions. If you guys remember in the new nodal paradigm video that I created, I'll link that below and in the top right hand corner, I talked about how July of 2022 and January 2023 are two major decision points for the collective. Therefore, we need June of 2022 to be a safe, healthy, and uh, duress-free experience so that we are stepping into July with the proper decision-making capabilities. And it's good in a way even to plan like June through December of 2022 as a certain level of safety or a certain level of fun or enjoyment as well depending on your personality type some people feel relaxed or calmed by uh you know exciting adventurous experiences and then some people need more of a uh, safe or secure feeling to generate that clarity uh, whatever it is for you try to plan appropriately in June, and even, uh, you know, taking an easy look at like the rest of your year, knowing what it's going to take, knowing what it's going to require of you, so that you find yourself in January 2023 with the most, um, with the most healthy you with which to make like uh, really big life decisions. Okay. Um, so, what else am I feeling about June 2022 intuitively? Um, this is a really wonderful time to choose reception over. Um, over giving. Okay, so I've identified in a few previous videos on my channel that many people were giving way too much or many people were uh, being drained or uh, forced to output more than they were receiving. June and, uh, you know, with the previous eclipses in May, it's very important to see a shift there. Uh, so if you need to cut back on those work hours, if you need to refine your output, if you need to refine your um, method of giving, or your method of production, this is a wonderful month to do, to do that. And economically as well, so spending less, wow, how, how rewarding uh, to run a, a higher surplus. Finding out ways to do that responsibly. Um, I find that the majority of people um, don't really know where their time, money, or energy is going, uh, so that solid budget is good right now. And even getting really like a domestic with it, okay, so maybe for some people it's like the whole cash envelope thing. Maybe for some people it's... Um, I don't know, some type of new hobbies that are not financially based or not connected or correlated with business so that you have more time going into things that aren't spending for you. I really want to challenge all of you here. Um, if you have identified you know, the oncoming months or the oncoming year as a grander decision point in your life, how can you make finance or energy investment or time expenditures something that doesn't place duress on your decision-making process? That's a question I would love for you all to sit with. I'm gonna be sitting with that myself. Um, and to maybe even journal about, like what can I institute in my life that will help me to not be influenced by merely the financial aspects of my life or merely the time spending or merely the fulfillment of even habits or addictions, especially when those are correlated with time and money, which they always are.
Okay, any type of addiction always has a financial and time context to it. And oftentimes when I'm working with people who've struggled with addiction, I'm like, let's look at where the money wound is. Let's look at where the uh, fear of spending time with oneself is. Okay, that's always underlining and underpinning addiction. Um, because often people with a highly addictive personality um, in childhood or in uh, the deep past uh, weren't able to properly spend time with themselves or were deprived of the ability to honor their own uh, self-timing. And because of that, uh, the brain or the, um, the psyche has kind of detached from needing self-time. So when people face time with the self or when they face, uh, you know, oh, wow, look, I have an hour or two free, all of a sudden they go into like this hyper consumptive mode where all of a sudden, okay, I've got to go buy something. I've got to uh, feed an addiction. I've got to distract myself with like a game or something or whatever it is. And uh, that becomes a vicious cycle. So another thing, uh, actually, as I was falling asleep last night, I, I hadn't remembered this, but I just remembered it uh, as I've I talked about this with you all right now. Um, I actually got a download that said uh, June 2022 is uh, disrupting the vicious cycle. Um, or June 2022 is interrupting some kind of cycle. So that could be directly correlating to addictive cycles, or it could be something else in your life that you have like repetitively been having to do over and over and over again. You could see an interruption there. Uh, again, this uh, Gemini season and this Aries energy, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second in the astrology section, it can be very disruptive. It can be like, okay, you had this great plan or you had this exact idea of what you were going to do or how you were going to uh, work with life. And then all of a sudden you're uh, pivoting or you're pivoted by another person or you're uh, requested to be somewhere else and you have to really be able to decide quickly. So this is why um, for those of you who are feeling um, really stressed out, like you're in recovery mode, maybe, because that is common coming from the previous year cycle of 2021. And even the first few months of 2022, where it was a very nine of wands, 10 of wands uh, vibe. Okay. Um, you know, I was talking about that for such a long time uh, last year. It can actually be really hard on us psychically, because when you get so productive or so or when you become a workaholic or you overwork or you don't give yourself that recovery period, decision making gets really weird because that part of the brain just isn't being accessed in the same way. Again, it pushes us more so into that repetition where we're not actually really present, but we're kind of stepping into almost an autonomous, like a repetition action with the nervous system. And uh, because of that, some of the more sophisticated uh, decision making is not so accessed when we're in like 10 of wands mode or when we're in, um, you know, uh, majorly cyclical production cycles. Uh, again, it's like a conveyor belt type of neurological output versus a conscious one or versus a uh, sophisticated or deliberate one. Um, so take a very uh, deliberate look at conveyor belt mentality in your life or factory output or things which have just been automated or that you repeat in uh, such a unthinking or unsophisticated way that might be disrupted in June. Okay. Um, it might really be disrupted in June. So for those of you who are business owners, if you own a factory or if you uh, have anything that happens in that automated way, there could be disruptions there. Um, that does make me think of cybersecurity. That makes me think of automated all kinds of automated uh, systems that we have, which could experience, uh, you know, being that we're entering this month with a Mercury retrograde, those could experience uh, disruption. So keep an eye out and maybe be prepared to invest more in automation or to, to have uh, some type of maintenance or upkeep uh, with any type of uh, machinery that generates some type of consistent, uh, predictable result. Because, you know, this period of time uh, at a greater level beyond all of this is asking us to take the wheel, okay? It's not asking us to hire a driver. It's not asking us to let somebody else choose. It's not asking us to be a passive player in someone else's movement, okay? These transits are asking us to drive. These transits are asking us to choose. These transits are asking us, and the greater period of this year, the greater nodal and uh, astrological alchemy is wanting to see 
uh, greater independent choices and what effects those cause, all right? Um, so I will tell you guys, if you're expecting somebody else to make the call for you, if you want a professional to tell you whether your business is right or wrong for you, if you want um, someone to choose where you live or to advise you, it is a harsh time for advisors or for um, other people being delegated your decision-making process. There are perhaps calls for other forms of outsourcing, but be careful with that. With this, uh, that was better in the last few uh, years, actually. Um, in fact, we have a Saturn retrograde in Aquarius coming on this uh, time as well, so it's a harsh time for like hiring, delegating, or outsourcing, um, but especially with things that are highly important. So, you know, um, we can't expect that other people will be able to make choices for us, and we need to learn with Jupiter and Aries okay, about how to um, experiment to an extent or how to understand that sometimes the answer to our question is only found in the process of testing out what we're curious about and it's not going to be in that deliberation or it's not going to be in, you know, even psychically trying to figure it out or listening to psychics on YouTube or listening to um, even professionals or other types of advisors on social media are not going to make these decisions for you. Okay, this is about you and it's about your own internal uh, cravings and needs to express. Um, so certainly, advisors or astrologers or psychics or any other types of professionals can be helpful and can help you within deliberation, but there's going to be a limit to how much any of that stuff can help as well. So I want you guys to keep that in mind as well. Also in June, there is a likelihood of shedding or uh, releasing quite a lot because these previous eclipses we had in May are still going to be like causing results, I think. And being that we had a lunar eclipse in Scorpio, it really denotes a lot of release or a lot of letting go. So um, for some people, it means like shedding excess weight. For some people, it's shedding excess habits. For some people, it's like even um, less of a lot of stuff. So less spending, less, um, less frivolous relationships, less frivolous uh, conversations, okay? Um, there's going to probably be a lot of stuff falling away during this time. So let that be a nice thing for your experience as you start to probably see that you can actually do what you want to do now uh, because of that stuff going. So um, that should be really nice to see. Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about for intuitive messages? There's a feeling of going back to basics. There's a feeling of really having a chance to implement true healing or to uh, shift behavior even, or to just uh, have a shinier kind of uh, more spark sparky experience during this time. It's much more light and less heavy than the uh, previous months and years, even like, like maybe 2019 has a slight similarity uh, because we had Jupiter and Sagittarius, but um, even it was heavier, I think, than this oncoming period of time is, and then the oncoming time after 2023 starts, because we're going to move back into a bit of heaviness at the end of this year, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't Heaviness does not mean negativity, but um, this will give us a slight preview into the 2023 paradigm that we will be working with as well. So um, anyway, everyone, I'm going to segue now into talking just about the astrology. So um, yes, we have some really, really beautiful transits happening this month. First of all, we have the Jupiter and Mars conjunction in Aries. So I made a video about Jupiter and Aries. If you guys want to check out that video, I'll link it below and in the top right hand corner. Um, for you guys to uh, find more information just on that transit. But um, Jupiter and Mars being an Aries, so this is soldier culture. This is uh, very much a uh, warlike signature. This is uh, at a mundane level for normal people. It's going to be about getting more active, and it's going to be about getting first person, sitting in the driver's seat, making decisions over your own life, getting out of the house, getting your feet on the ground, getting out of the um, mind a little bit, okay, getting into the body, getting on the feet, okay, and uh, getting into the core of the body, strengthening, so um, personal training is wonderful, hiring a personal trainer, um, running, okay, endurance training, um, even like martial arts or some type of uh, um, graceful or, or a stronger form of uh, habit with the nervous system to greater strengthen 
the resolve because I feel that the Jupiter Mars conjunction signals that there's a lack of resolve or that people have become soft or that people have become in a way incapable of facing their own difficulties and the Jupiter Aries is coming to like whip us into shape okay so there's a likelihood of being like having to suddenly whip yourself into shape or the likelihood of having to um, even uh, face things that are like maybe hard or having a rough tra rough training schedule having um, a lot of uh, adventure waiting for you as well. It's wonderful for a lot of people to get out of their comfort zone with Jupiter, Mars, and Aries. If you're totally in your comfort zone during this time, especially from a physical perspective, it's not so great because um, the mind could go really crazy trying to process this energy. It has to be processed through the body. Um, so we need a more decentralized approach to energy processing as if it's too centralized, it's very harsh and overwhelming. Um, so it needs to be processed in like the hands and the feet and the arms and the legs as opposed to like the head, right? Um, so with that in mind, what a wonderful time for um, like deep tissue massage or something, especially if it's in like the limbs of the body. So um, great for like the central areas of the body too, you know, the neck and the central nervous system, but really getting out and away from the central nervous system, getting into the peripheral nervous system, getting into the extremities, um, uh, anything that deals with uh calibration or coordination within the uh extremities okay so piano playing instrument playing things that are using the hands and the fingers things that use the feet and the toes this will help to pull the energy away from the mind because if the energy if the energy is just in the mind in a month like june of 2022 it's really really not auspicious okay and i think that that's been visible ever since like a year and a half ago i mean even late in 2020 we were all also getting almost like uh, in the fetal position within the mind with how much energy was focusing there because people were you know, staying at home and not really getting out so much. So it's good to get out. It's good to um, really uh, be able to observe nature as well and to see things outside of you and outside of your home uh, during this time. It's a very indicated. There's also kind of a strictness about it. Uh, you know, again, I've talked in the Jupiter and Aries video about these soldier cultures and about how hierarchical, bureaucratic, and strict they can be. Um, so there's a likelihood of having to deal with uh, bureaucratic norms or having to deal also with very strict spending. So some of us, you know, with the inflation or with loss of wage or with anything that uh, is likely to come up during this time, uh, we have to be very cognizant and we can't afford to just, um, swipe the credit card now okay uh, if we want to have any freedom okay so debt traps very very possible with north node in uh, taurus uranus and taurus and um, also that lunar eclipse in scorpio i think that there's a lot of traps i think there's a lot of very easy ways that we can restrict our own autonomy during this time so that's why we need to be strong clear and implementing of our own uh, self-empowering strategies now okay what we know to be uh, self-restricting and what we know to be self-empowering should be things that we have a very easy quick way to implement around and something that we don't have to deliberate that much on anymore so um, again like I was saying for some people it's like cash envelopes now or it's like um, very strict like budgeting apps or something so to like force ourselves not to overspend because it's really hard not to overspend right now um, and that's not our faults, okay? But nonetheless, we have to adapt uh, or we have to uh, lose our um, autonomy in some way. It's like either an adaption or a loss of autonomy. Ooh, that's really powerful. I'm getting major chills. So we're facing either an adaption or a loss of autonomy uh, in a lot of energetic ways. So that's another signal point of the Jupiter Mars conjunction in Aries is like, okay, you got to survive this, you got to adapt. Um, the Jupiter Pluto Saturn conjunction of 2020 in Capricorn has faded a lot, and we have Pluto retrograde activating those points, but it's not the deep cement concrete root connection that it was then. We are in a much more mobile place now, and we need to be. So, um, Otherwise, for transits, we have uh, Mars moving between Chiron and Jupiter. So um, as Mars conjoins Jupiter, it keeps moving, and it, uh, by the end of the month, is, um, if I can find the chart here, uh, yeah, it has already surpassed uh, Chiron by the end of the month, but that's going to be a really interesting situation where we have Mars and Jupiter conjunct in Aries. Mars moves all the way up through the midpoint between Chiron and Jupiter and eventually surpasses Chiron. 
so that means that um, is this a happy or a sad story that we're in is what that means. So we have a question to ask ourselves is, is are the choices that I've been making creating a happy or a sad story? Are the um, people in my life creating a happy or sad story, almost like surrounding me and creating a greater narrative without even my input? Is the way that I'm generating power, energy, or abundance in my life creating a happy or a sad story? Because I kind of feel like with that transit, there's like a reminder that like, regardless of how like rich, poor, um, you know, popular, unpopular one is, like you see the happy and sad stories on both sides of that. So you might see exceptions. You might see that, um, you know, somebody who was really like a, a, a pariah and like not very uh, well to do financially is in like a very happy place now or is like really safeguarded away in like a really kind of like uh, sidelined place that has now become front and center for their life and they're like really happy. At the same time, you could see like super popular, super powerful, super wealthy people in a state of like absolute terror or fear or um, absolute, but like they can't experience one moment in the day of like calmness or tranquility except to keep everything up or they have to, you know, constantly be at the chessboard of life, you know, and don't have any time to even like observe their own living breath, you know. Um, so you, c you can see with, with the Mars Jupiter Chiron interplay here, there's a major question of like, okay, regardless of how I'm living, regardless of the circumstances or the uh, pieces of the chessboard or regardless of what life has given me, I have to choose whether this is a happy or a sad story. So we definitely see people who want a sad story no matter what, regardless of what they're given, regardless of what they receive, regardless of what they put out, it's gonna be a sad story, okay? And they've chosen that. And then the other way around, we see people who are like, okay, regardless of what they're giving, this is gonna be a happy story. This is going to be an empowering and um, strong uh, self-building story. So to me, June 2022, with that, that's a very, very incredible, powerful, powerful transit. I mean, I could almost make a whole video just on that, the interplay of Jupiter, Chiron, and Mars. Uh, because again, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, Chiron is also a centaur, and uh, Mars is uh, not a centaur, but it's uh, very well placed in Sagittarius, and it connects really well with the fire element. So it it means strength and it means um, also uh, unconventionality in a way, or it means a different contact to progression, or it means that luck or trauma or wounds are playing a part in this story that we couldn't have anticipated. So, it also says to me that the tried, true, traditional, conventional ways of progressing are kind of out the door right now. That might not be the most uh, poignant way to put it, but there's an unconventionality about the time, and there is a very uh, survivor's signature indication. Um, there, there's like a, a new survival instinct or a new level of thriving that comes from the true overcoming of trauma and the true embrace of purpose and luck with with a Mars almost bringing a message from Jupiter to Chiron. Uh, so Mars bringing a more lucky, more uh, purposeful, more motivated idea from Jupiter to Chiron. And then so maybe Chiron can access a more uh, purposeful uh, place, which is part of that archetype as well. So it's, uh, it's known as the wounded healer. Uh, so it does denote where we struggle or where we have a hard time, then also how we gain from struggles or uh, difficult times. And um, I think that we're going to feel more power within our backstory with this or within our origin story almost with this uh, Jupiter Mars Chiron experience. So um, we also have uh, Venus in Taurus, which is going to be a beautiful point of reception for us this month. I love seeing Venus transiting through Taurus. Uh, it's going to uh, move very quickly through and by the end of the month be into the sign of Gemini. Um, so Venus is moving really well. So relationships can really heal up. Like Venus is not being uh, very negatively aspected at all. It's uh, moving quickly. It's moving uh, very 
strongly through these uh, two signs of Taurus and Gemini. So it's a wonderful time actually for new relationships. Um, also because we have uh, this incredible Taurus stellium coming up of uh, North Node Uranus Venus and Mercury. Okay, so uh, that's going to, for some people, introduce a new relationship into their lives, or like it could be new business relationships as well. And it looks like a very wonderful time for entrepreneurs, a very wonderful time for, for uh, innovating or creating new strategies, uh, for launching new businesses, for uh, trying to take your life to the next level or trying to evolve, basically. It's a great evolution point with this Taurus stellium, uh, especially in regards to anything that gives back or anything that creates material value or abundance. There's going to be a lot of pleasure in reception and beauty during this time. It's a wonderful time to introduce a new beauty regimen or to uh, revamp your skincare, your diet, your exercise, um, and even just your styles, like your clothing, your... Uh, we've been having actually quite a bit of time for that, and I, I encourage you guys to think about your... Um, not for the purpose of like what other people think of you, but just for the purpose of feeling abundant in your own life. It might really change the way you feel just to have a a new style or a new type of uh, clothing, maybe a type that you've never worn before. Maybe it's a new uh, a hairstyle you've never had before. Maybe it's uh, because, you know, the North Node, Uranus, Venus, Mercury, and Taurus, it to me indicates a brand new chapter at a, every single level for most people. So like, oh, wow, that person has a brand new hairstyle that they've, never, they've never had before. That person um, has a new business or a new uh, type of uh, contribution that they've never had before. There needs to be something totally new here, you guys. And and this could be channeled in so many ways. You do not have to drastically change your appearance. Certainly, you don't have to in any way. It's not right for everybody to do that. But something needs to feel totally new, okay? Uh, Jupiter, Mars, and Aries. Uh, Uranus, Mercury, Venus, North Node, and Taurus. Okay, Gemini season with Mercury and Venus moving towards Gemini. This is really fresh stuff here. This is fresh, fresh, new, uh, new birth, new conception, new, new concepts. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful to see that. Okay. Um, what else do I want to talk about? We do also have Saturn moving retrograde on June the 5th. Okay. So, um, that's okay. Uh, yeah, we have to re-examine structures. Okay. That's what Saturn retrograde always means. It's a re-examination of structure. It's a re-examination of, um, of earnings, of uh, budgets, income. I think that you guys have got this in the bag. Like this particular Saturn retrograde, of course it goes retrograde once a year, as do all of the outer planets. Um, so it's not a rare transit, but uh, yeah, once a year we need to look at how our structures are working. We need to look at our budgets. We need to look at our um, sources of energy and the foundations, uh, the greater foundations that we are creating. Um, so that will start happening on, happening on June the 5th. And it is in the sign of Aquarius. So again, with a Mercury retrograde and Saturn retrograde, um, it means that there could be some difficulties with automation or that, uh, especially being that it's a Saturn Aquarius retrograde, uh, employees, automations, um, affiliations, greater networks, social media glitches, okay, uh, computer glitches. Uh, for some people, you need to rework your system or you need to rework your um, payrolls or your automations or things like that. Uh, but many of you have already done that, it does seem. Um, and again, this is where it's looking to me more like a personal time than a group time or a, uh, you know, again, some people are making these great new businesses. Some people are creating these new networks. However, it might be better just to be in a first person story or to just be moving uh, in your own right or in your own uh, name or in your own way because it is a kind of a difficult time for big, big projects that rely on other people. It kind of depends on where you're at, but um, it's uh, really just a wonderful month for self-exploration and for uh, all types of exploration, really. Also, um, relationships with parental figures or authority figures with Saturn retrograde. It's always a good time to re to review those and to understand, um, do I need to give more to my family? Do I need to uh, redefine my familial relationships um, or my parental relationships? Or also relationships with bosses or employers as well. Um, also, any types of like licenses or 
uh, anything that you need to do something or uh, official documentation for any type of uh, legitimacy is important to also make sure is in order with a Saturn retrograde. And it's always a good time to uh, get all that stuff right. Um, also, uh, I would turn your attention this month in June to um, things that you require on a daily basis or things that have become Saturnized in your life or things that have become uh, a construct in your experience and understand if those uh, need to be there or not. Um, to conclude this video, I will give you guys just a few key dates that I was able to write down. So June 3rd, we have a Mercury stationing direct. June 5th, we have Saturn turning retrograde. June 11th, we have Venus Uranus conjunction. June 14th, we have full moon in Sagittarius, as well as Mercury entering Gemini, as well as the Mars Chiron conjunction in Aries. June 14th is a huge day. Okay, <laughs> a full moon alongside a Mars Chiron conjunction with uh, Mercury moving into its home sign of Gemini. It seems kind of like a great uh, potential for empowerment, but I will tell you guys more about that as the time comes closer. And yes, uh, those to me were the most meaningful days of the month. So if you want to write those down or plan around those uh, times accordingly, um, I wish you guys all the absolute best for the month ahead. Be sure to come check out my Patreon page. I do weekly tea chats detailing the week ahead uh, with intuitive messages every week on Patreon. The memberships are very reasonable. Um, check those out. It will be linked below. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button and thumbs up this video and share it with someone if you want to um, share these messages. I hope you all have a beautiful month of June. Enjoy it, and I will talk to you soon. Much love. Bye.